Choosing a Home by Ginny Rules 27, Chapter 39 Phil had honestly been avoiding this part, ever since his parents came home from Aurora General a month ago, with his new niece and Audrey's body. Neither one of his parents was up for packing up Audrey's room, so he thought he'd do it for them. As a way to avoid them, to have to reopen the wounds of losing Audrey. It, it was the kingly thing to do, right? To take care of things so that his parents wouldn't have to worry about them. If he was going to be king of Auroria after his dad, he'd need to start doing things the kingly way. Besides, choosing the baby's name had been tough enough for his parents. They had decided to go with Paige both as a way of connecting the newest member of the family to her grandfather and uncle, but also a way to almost make sure Freddy's memory died out by not having any of his children have a letter connected to him. Paige's full name, they decided, would be Paige Audrey Rose. At least Ari seems to like her little sister, Philip thought as he shifted the box that was under his arm. Looking around his sister's room, he sighed. He was definitely going to need more than one box, but it was all he could really sneak up. Anything else would have been too noticeable. Absently picking up a nearby stuffed animal that was buried under a mountain of pillows, Phil felt his heart break when he realised what he was holding. Audrey's beloved stuffed rabbit, the one she had screamed at him for taking when they were six and four respectively, because he needed a maiden to save from a tower. Bonnies could be maidens, at least according to his impressionable four-year-old brain. Audi, why? Why did you have to go? Why did you have to hurt mum and dad one last time? They miss you. I miss you. Phil thought as he swallowed to clear the lump in the back of his throat. Phil? Claudine's voice sounded from the doorframe, and Phil looked over at her, accidentally tossing the rabbit into the closet as he spun towards the door. What are you doing? I... I was going to get started. I mean, it has to be done. Not by you, though, Claudine said as she walked over to him, gently taking the box he was holding out of his hands. Come on. You lost your sister. You should be in mourning not trying to handle everything under the sun. You... you lost your brother, though. And you... I accepted the fact that Freddy wasn't the brother I once knew. Claudine said softly. The burial had been a private affair. Just her, Henry, Mal and Ben, on a ship that King Eric and Queen Ariel had graciously loaned them. It wasn't a pirate ship, as Henry would have preferred, but it was the best they had. Freddy would never know the difference, considering he was, well, Ash. But who's going to do it if not me? Phil asked, his soft voice pulling Claudine out of her thoughts. I will. Melody's voice came from the doorframe, and Phil jerked his head back towards it. There she was, his best friend, standing there with their other friends, Evan, Ashaki, Neil, the Hatter Twins, Alexandria, and even their new friends among the BKs. CJ, Ryan, Brooke, Dizzy, Celia and Hattie stood in the back, holding boxes, and in Hattie's case, a tub of what looked like cooked chicken. What? What are you guys doing here? Phil asked, more than a little amazed. The funeral had been a private affair. Only family. Which, yes, did include Claudine, thank you. So even if Phil wanted to invite his friends, he couldn't have. He hadn't heard anything from his friends after the funeral. In all honesty, he thought they were mad at him for not inviting them. Mal sent out a message among the kids whose parents are in the Learning to Be Royal Club after your parents announced that Audrey had... had passed, Evan spoke up. A Akio and Amira leading the older kids and boxing up Audrey's dorm over an Oradon prep. Mal would have been here herself, but she's slammed right now, according to Rowan. So, we came to help, Melody said. And yes, 
I know I'm not a part of the Learning to be Royal Kids Club, but you're my best friend, Phil. I'm not going to sit on the sidelines while you're in mourning. Harriet said that Mal and Uma said that Freddy was half pirate. CJ spoke up. While Will always hate his guts, even though he's probably being tormented by Lord Hades, Ari and the new princess are guiltless. They didn't choose to have Freddy as a father any more than Claudine chose to have him as a brother. Well said, Ryan nodded, resting a hand on CJ's shoulder. Plus, we got permission to be here anyway, so it's not like we're doing anything wrong, Alexandria added. Wait, what? You're not as sneaky as you think you are, Phil. Melody said as she gently led him over to a nearby bench. You really think we'd be here to sneakily box up Audrey's room? If it wasn't okay with your parents? They've been through so much, though. Phil whispered as Melody rubbed his back. I... I didn't want them to have to deal with that heartache on top of running the kingdom. Melody gave Phil a sad smile as she saw how tired he looked. Phil... Have you gotten any sleep since Audrey died? A few hours here and there, Phil muttered, and Melody sighed, brushing a strand of her raven black hair out of her eyes. All right, guys, throw out only the stuff that you know needs to be thrown out. Used makeup and the like, she said. If you're unsure, ask. If the person you're asking is unsure, don't touch it until we can talk to Aurora and Philip. I'm going to take this one down here for his own nap. Gotcha, Melody. The AKs nodded. Hi, Gavin, the VK said, causing Melody to smile slightly. I'm not a captain. You're in charge of this mission, Hattie told her. Say you're a captain for today, cuz. Melody gave Hattie a small smile before leading Phil out of the room toward his own bedroom. She frowned slightly as Phil gave next to no resistance to being led to his room. Phil... You are sleeping, right? Don't lie to me, please. I mean, someone's got to help with the girls, Phil said, his voice soft. Isn't that why Claudine's here? Didn't you tell me she's offered to help considering they're her nieces too? Phil nodded. Claudine had made that offer and had been a great help. But for some reason, she'd almost been hesitant to help with Paige as she got older and it became apparent that her eyes would be the same shade of grey as Freddy's had been. Philip had once overheard Claudine talking about that. He hadn't meant to, but they were all in the pool, and the sound carried. I... I know I shouldn't, Claudine told Henry as Phil swam with Paige in his arms, Ari by their side in a floaty. But every time I look into those eyes, I see Freddy staring back at me. Claudine, she's a baby, Henry said, his voice gentle. She hasn't had a chance to be twisted like your brother was. No offence. None taken. And I know she's a baby, which is why I don't know why it's so hard for me to get close to her. I managed fine with Ari when she was Paige's age. But every time I see those grey eyes on Paige, I just feel like I'm never going to escape him. I don't know, it's not fair to her, but... Hey, hey, it's okay, Henry said softly, pulling her into his arms. You had to deal with Freddy all your life, and the important thing is that you're trying. You don't leave Paige to suffer if you don't have to when she's crying. Of course I don't, Claudine shook her head. She's my niece. I won't just leave her to cry if she needs someone, and I'm the only one in earshot. Henry smiled and kissed the top of her head. It'll be okay. Paige isn't Freddy. Just give her a chance, okay? I always do, Claudine said with a small smile. You okay? Melody asked, pulling Phil back into the present. Just thinking. Melody gave Phil a small, sad smile as she gently laid him on his bed. As his head hit the pillow, she began running her fingers through his hair. Oh, the waves roll low, and the waves roll high, and so it goes. Under the bright 
blue endless sky. She began to sing the familiar lullaby. A lullaby that her mother had sang to her as a child, and a lullaby that her grandmother had sung to her mother. Waves try to measure the days that we treasure. Wave hello and wave goodbye. Soft snores were the only response from Phil, but Melody didn't mind. It was clear that he needed the sleep, and it was clear that he needed to mourn too. He wasn't the king of Aurora yet. Sure, he'd be a father soon because of their agreement, but that didn't mean he couldn't be a teen. Honestly, I blame Ben. His workaholic and stoic nature clearly rubbed off on the other heirs, she thought before gently laying a gentle kiss on Philip's cheek. She hadn't been lying that day in Ben's office when she had said there were worse people to have a kid with. She wasn't even dreading her 18th birthday, in all honesty even though that was when the agreement would come into effect. Pulling a blanket up over Phil, Melody ducked out of the room and made her way back to Audrey's room. How's the progress? Melody asked as she walked back into the room. The only thing we've managed to get rid of is Audrey's makeup, Claudine said, and that's only because no one wants used makeup. Everything else we're unsure of, in all honesty. We've boxed up some of her clothes for Aurora and Philip to decide on when we found this. Claudine held up a stuffed rabbit that had clearly been loved based on how much of the fluff was missing. In all honesty, it looked like a rag instead of a rabbit. The only way to tell what it was was the two long ears. Hmm, not exactly something you'd think Audrey would have had, Evans said. From what Chad used to tell me, Audrey would carry that thing everywhere when they were kids. Alexandria said, Ben would have his dragon and Audrey would have her rabbit. Why am I not surprised Ben had a plush dragon? Hadi asked, shaking his head slightly in amusement. It was honestly a little scary how much his future brother-in-law was like his sister. Give me the rabbit, Neil said. I can take him to Evie, get him repaired. Or her. I don't know what gender the stuffed rabbit is. Ruby insists all her stuffed animals were girls when we were kids, Evan chuckled, at least according to Rose and Robin. Claudine smiled. You know, once this is brought back to life, Harry might like it. Or Paige, Harry pointed out. Besides, if Uma has her way, both the girls are going to know their pirate backgrounds, Celia stated. A nice dig of Freddy from beyond the grave. Uh, no offence, Claudine. None taken. Claudine chuckled. Freddy always denied the fact that he was half pirate. The only thing he ever said about his mother, once he found out she was a member of my mother's crew, was that her name was Mary. Why am I not surprised? Neil said, rolling his eyes. From what Evie said about Freddy, he was just like his father in terms of his fanaticism. So it makes sense that Frollo would go for a woman with a biblical name. Melody shook her head. Okay, as much as I know we'd all like to trash talk Freddy until the sea cows come home, but I'd rather not bother Queen Aurora and King Philip too much while they're in mourning. Let's get a move on, guys. Right, the others nodded, and they quickly got back to work. Melody gave her friends a small smile before joining them. Okay, exactly what was the point in us doing this? Grace Hatter said after about half an hour. All we did was box up stuff for Aurora and Philip to decide what to do with. We also threw some stuff out, her twin sister Paige added. Makeup. We threw out makeup. It was something we did to try to make it a bit easier for Aurora and Philip. Melody said, Aurora didn't ask to be related to Leah or Audrey. So why should she be punished? Aha, uh -huh. Grace smirked. And it's not just because you've developed a small crush on Phil now, is it? Careful, Grace. Alex told me you've spent an awful lot of time around Neil, Melody said with a smirk of her own. Could you possibly be projecting? Thankfully, Neil was not present for this conversation, as he was down in the kitchens with Evans, getting some snacks and waters for the group. Do I want to know? Henry asked as he poked his head in, preventing Grace from shooting back a retort. What are you doing here? Claudine asked her fiancé. 
walking over to give him a kiss on the cheek. I wanted to see if you wanted to spa and couldn't find you at the pool or at Mal's. Henry explained. So I decided to search the castle. Ah, spa? We know, CJ. Hattie chuckled. But I think Henry would rather spa with Claudine than you. I'm always willing to spa with a member of our crew, Henry said. But I don't think Ryan would be too happy with me if I took you away from him, CJ. Claudine chuckled as he saw the look on Ryan's face. It was clear that the brown-haired boy agreed with what Henry had said. We're boxing up Audrey's room, she told Henry. We thought it'd be something we could do for Aurora and Philip. They've done so much for me. It's the least I can do for them. Henry gave Claudine a soft smile as he gently kissed her forehead. Put me to work, Gavin. What do you need? More boxes, Claudine told him, smiling at the pet name. She had once tried to argue against it, but Henry had insisted. He said that she was a pirate captain's daughter, so it was only right to refer to her by that title. I'm on it, Henry said. Roy, you're with me. Ryan nodded and the two rats quickly left. Claudine and CJ shaking their heads in slightly in amusement, before the rest of them got back to work. If one had looked into Audrey's bedroom, one would have thought she had a lot of friends. Friends who missed her and wanted to reminisce about the fun times they had spent together. One would be wrong. The Oridon kids weren't doing it for Audrey. They were doing it for Phil, one of the most loyal friends they had ever had, and someone who didn't deserve the heartbreak of losing a sibling. They were doing it for the little girls, who now would never know their mother or father. And the villain kids certainly weren't doing it for Audrey. They were doing it for Aurora, a woman who was trying desperately to make right the wrongs her mother had inflicted upon the Isle. They were doing it for Philip, probably one of the few heroes that the rats had respected. Hey, anyone who can kill Maleficent gets a modicum of respect, okay? Dragon or no dragon. Anyway, they were doing it for him, a man who had clearly loved his daughter, and every VK knew the pain of losing a loved one, or knew someone who knew that pain. Audrey may have tried to take over Oridon and threatened Mal, but Audrey's parents did not. They remained loyal to King Ben, to Mal, and even provided Claudine a place in their home and in their family. No matter what, the VKs would be there for the Roses. After all, for most of them, their motto was ruthless yet loyal, and a loyalty shown would be loyalty repaid tenfold. End of chapter. Hi guys, hope you enjoyed that one. I like that one. Sad but sweet. Melody and Phil basically already acting like a couple. Very sweet. And the others all joining in and coming together for people that they know are hurting. I really respect that. Anyway, you guys know the drill. Like, comment and subscribe and hit that bell to get notified for whenever I upload a new video. Have a good day night or whatever time zone you're in. Bye my guys, guys, and non-binary pals. I'll see you in another video. Take care.